friendly to be praised. God is great and friendly to be praised. God is great. God is great and friendly to be praised. Friendly to be praised. God is great and friendly to be praised. Verses 1 and 2. And the word of the Lord says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Our thought for this morning, change your thinking change your life change your thinking change your life let us pray verse number two of our text said and be not conformed to this world this world is a reference to the current world system. The worldly mindset. The common behavior. The ungodly ways of this current age. So when he says be not conformed to this world, he's not talking about the streets and the trees and the grass and the birds, but he's talking about the ways and the mindset, the thinking patterns, the habits and the character 
of our culture and all of its ungodliness. These things which bear such influence over most people. They bear such influence over the common mind and life. And Paul admonishes us to be not conformed to this world. Being conformed means to obey. To conform means to comply with. So Paul is saying here not to accept the cookie cutter mold of ungodly mindsets that rule those who don't know God. He's saying don't think like unsaved people. Don't speak like unsaved people. Don't dress like unsaved people. Don't live like unsaved people. Don't respond to situations and circumstances like unsaved people. As we recall that Paul is writing to the church in Rome, those who are called to be saints. That word saints means holy ones. Uh, to be holy means to be set apart for God's special purpose. Uh, and so as Paul is writing to the church, as Paul is writing to the saints, he's writing to those who are called to be separated from what is normal. The sooner we let go of wanting to fit in with everybody else, the sooner we will become what God has intended for us to be. He never intended you to blend in with everybody else on your job. He never intended you to blend in with your friends who don't know him. If you know the Lord, you ought to stick out like a sore thumb. They ought to be able to see it all on your lifestyle. They ought to be able to see it all on your attitude. When everybody else get mad and upset, but you still have a reason to rejoice. When everybody else gets depressed and get down, but you still got a reason to praise the Lord. Uh, it becomes visible all on you. Uh, God wants you to be so saturated in his presence uh, that it's like it's seeping out of every pore of your body. Somebody ought to say amen. Give me a little more on my monitor, please. Don't speak as the ungodly do. Don't act as the ungodly do. Don't dress as the ungodly do. Don't respond as the ungodly do. The only way to change these behaviors is if you decide not to think as the ungodly do. You see, here in this passage, Paul is pointing out one of the keys to real change in your life. Yes, it's important to make a decision to give your life to the Lord. Ah, yes, it's important to come on down to the altar. Ah, let somebody pray with you. Make that decision. Get in the water and be baptized in Jesus' name uh, for the washing away, the removal of your sin. Uh, yes, it's ultimately important to be filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues uh, and to decide to live a holy life. Um, but if you're really going to become what he wants you to be once you've had that initial transformation, uh, you've got to embark on your daily transformation. Uh, you've got to embark on a separated and on a different lifestyle. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. Verse number two again said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. The transformation of your life is dependent upon your effort to renew your mind. Upon your effort to recondition your mind. Upon your effort to reprogram your mind. Ah, you see, you have to understand that until we come to the Lord, we spend our whole life under programming and it is demonic programming uh, it is satanic programming 
Uh, the reason why after we got saved and we had to struggle and fight against certain habits uh, is because we had those things programmed into us, uh, programmed even by the things we saw mama and daddy do. Uh, if you grew up in a house with mama and daddy cussing and fighting, and when you get grown, you're more likely to be cussing and fighting with your honey. Uh, if you grew up in a household where mama and daddy wouldn't stay together, you're less likely to be able to stay together because you have been programmed by what you have observed. Uh, yes, we need to teach our children the right things, but on top of teaching, uh, on top of telling them, it's important that we model the right thing. Uh, you've got to show them the way. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Uh, people aren't all that impressed with all that good talking. Uh, we need to see some good works. Uh, people aren't all that impressed with all of that good gabbing and, and jaw jacking. Uh, but we want to see if you can walk the walk. Uh, anybody can talk the talk. Uh, but who's really living for Jesus? Uh, who's really willing to give mercy and patience? Uh, who's willing to forgive somebody who did you wrong? Uh, even though they didn't even say I'm sorry. Uh, but I forgive you anyway. Because uh, God is a gracious God. Uh, and he wants his grace to be seen in the world through you and I. Somebody say amen. But if we're going to get to that place, and we have to renew our mind. That phrase, renew, that's a powerful thing. Uh, see, when your mind was new, you were as a little child. Um, and as a little child, your mind was a sponge, and you just began to soak up everything you were seeing and hearing and experiencing. Uh, and these are the things that have formed you into the person that you are today. Uh, but once you come to Jesus and you've received the Holy Ghost, uh, my brother and my sister, you have been born again. Uh, and so if you have been born anew, uh, then you ought to have a new mind. Um, you can't live this new life with that old mindset. Uh -huh. You can't live an everlasting life with a mindset of everlasting death. You can't be a cussing Christian. You can't be a lying Christian. I'm going to hurt y'all now. You can't be a gossiping Christian. You need to learn how to shut your lips sometimes. Mind your own business. You can't be a stealing Christian. The saints don't sell drugs, neither do we use them. You can't be no drunken Christian. You can't be no blaspheming Christian. If you're going to be a, if you're gonna be a Christian, if you're going to be a saint, you got to be a saint every day. You got to be a saint in the morning and in the evening. You got to be holy when you're happy and holy when you're mad. Jesus said, be angry, but sin not. It ain't wrong to be mad, but some of the stuff we do when we're mad, that makes us wrong. There's got to be a change. There's got to be a renewing in our minds. See, everything starts with your mind. Uh, your mind is what produces your words. Ah, uh, yes. Uh -huh. Your words is what proceeds your action. Uh huh. Your action is what forms your habits. Uh huh. Your habits is what determines your character. Uh huh. And your character is what shows us your destination. Uh, so if you want to get to the destination we all say we're striving for, uh, then you're going to have to start by having a renewed mind. Uh, somebody touch your own head and say, Lord, help me. Uh, I've got to learn to think differently. Uh, I've got to change my thinking uh, if I'm going to change my life. You see, you must choose. You must choose to see everything as God has said it. You must choose to believe that what God said is true. Uh, now, see, all of that didn't come on the first day I got the Holy Ghost. Uh, but I had to go through a process to reprogram. Because uh, the devil is still trying to force his program. Uh, so I had to open up the manual. <laughs> 
and begin to go through the manual and, and consume a new program for my mind. Now, I had to take my eyes off the TV sometime um, and put them into the Word of God so I can get a new program for my life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't care how long you've been saved, um, if you want to be successfully saved, uh, if you really want to learn how to live holy and how to live right, uh, you're going to have to consume this program every day. Uh, we all need to be reading the word every day. Uh, we all need to be praying every day. Uh, we all need to be giving God praise every day. Uh, you've got to reprogram your mind. Uh, it's just like a computer. Uh, you can't get nothing out of there that you didn't put in. Lord, I... I see Sister Spoon, and she's powerful in the Lord. Uh, oh, yeah, she cast out devils. She prophesies. Uh, when she prays, you can feel heaven moving. I, I want to be like Sister Spoon one day. Uh -huh. Okay, that sounds good, my sister, uh -huh. but you don't pray except every two three times a week. Uh, you pray on Sunday morning at church. Uh, uh, you might remember to say grace before you eat your food. Uh, and then one time, maybe during the end of the week, you might say, now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Uh, that's a nursery rhyme. That's not a prayer. Now, uh, if you want to get some power, power is found in prayer. Uh, if you want to be able to cast out devils, uh, Jesus said this kind go not out but by fasting uh, and prayer. Uh, you're going to have to put some effort into that thing. Uh, it's called the costly anointing. Uh, if you want your life to be changed, uh, you got to do the things that are going to change the way you see the world. You've got to choose to see your life the way God said it is. You've got to choose to see your situation the way God said it is. Um, you've got to choose to see everything um, the way God said it is. Because um, the devil will always present an alternative idea. <laughs> Somebody say fake news. Uh -huh. The devil always has a different perspective. <laughs> oh, in my own mind, <laughs> my own flesh can always come up with a different narrative. <laughs> but I choose to see it the way God said it. Uh, I refuse to accept what the devil said about me. Uh -huh. I know I can't be the only one. Uh -huh. After I got saved, I slipped up. Uh -huh. I fell in some sin again. Uh -huh. And here come the devil talking about, see, you never was saved to start with. Uh -huh. You might as well stop going to church. Uh -huh. You might as well stop reading your Bible. You never was even saved. Uh -huh. And the devil used to get me dragged down sometime, uh -huh. make me feel depressed sometime. Uh -huh. But then I got a hold of myself. I said, no, sir, Mr. Devil, but God has saved me. I remember the day, the very hour when God filled my soul with his Holy Ghost power. Yes, yes, and I'm wearing the helmet of salvation so I can remember that I'm so sweetly saved. So I confess my sin, huh? and God has forgiven me. Huh? If you're glad that God huh, is still forgiving sin, huh? if you're glad that you still belong to him, huh? if you're glad that you're still saved, huh? somebody say yeah. Thank you, Lord. You've got to choose to see it God's way. Oh, yeah, there's, there's plenty of other options, but I choose to see it God's way. Uh, they told me I was too young to get married. <laughs> well, I tell you what, we got married in 1999, <laughs> and here we are in 2018, and we're still married and happier than probably anybody who ever told us we shouldn't get married. Uh, I choose to see it God's way. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. We got some folk in here today. Folk gave up on you. They said you never was going to make it. Some of y'all been told to your face you ain't no good and you ain't never going to be no good. But God made you and he said you're very good. And I choose to see myself the way God said it. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Listen to me. If God says it's right, it's right. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. 
if God say he'll do it, it will work. If you change your thinking, you'll change your entire life. See, sometimes we fail because we thought ourselves out of God's plan. God said, stop right here and wait. We stopped for a second. But then we started looking around and saying, Lord, I'm uncomfortable here. I don't see a solution here. It's taking longer than it should take here. I see other people who started after I did and they're running past me. Why am I stuck here? Uh, well, maybe I better just move on and see what the Lord going to do. You see, you didn't thought yourself right out of the will of God. You didn't thought yourself out of an Isaac and ended up with an Ishmael. You didn't thought yourself right out of blessing and ended up cursed. Because the most important thing is to line yourself up with the revealed will of God uh, and to stay in the revealed will of God. You see, the safest place on earth is right in the middle of God's will. Amen, somebody. Uh, I know it might not look good right now, but if you'll stay in God's will, it's going to work out for your good. Uh -huh. I know it might not feel good right now, but if you'll just stay true to God, God will always be true to you. Uh, I know it might not sound like it's going to work out, uh, but I promise you, if you'll learn how to wait on the Lord, he will renew your strength. If you know that's right, somebody ought to put your hands together and say, thank you, Jesus. You must purposefully see yourself as God declared you to be. So the Bible said, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How do you see yourself? How do you think of yourself? Uh, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Uh, which means you will never be able to go any further than the limits that you set for yourself in your own mind. Uh, that's why you've got to be proactive in your reprogramming and start telling yourself what the word said instead of what the devil said. Uh, Thank you, Jesus. The word tells me that I'm called to live in holiness and righteousness. Uh, and the flesh tells me you could never do it because you're only human. Uh, God tells me that I'm called to be perfect as he is perfect. Uh, and the world tells me you couldn't be perfect. Only Jesus could be perfect. Uh, well, I choose to see it the way God said it. Uh, I've got to begin to think differently. I, I will never be holy until I decide that by God's help, I can be holy. Uh, with men it is impossible but with God all things are possible uh, somebody said you can never get off crack cocaine uh, but with God all things are possible uh, but you have to make up your mind I'm coming off of these drugs uh, you have to make up your mind I'm coming off this alcohol uh, you have to make up your mind I'm moving out I ain't shacking up no more uh, you have to make up your mind I'm not falling in the same place anymore uh, but I'm walking in the power of God uh, I'm walking in the righteousness of God. I'm walking in the faithfulness of God. You got to make up your mind. I'm doing everything God told me to do. See, the problem with folk this day, the reason so many people get divorced is because they get married and they're thinking if it don't work out, I just get a divorce. Well, I tell people all the time, if you come in with that mindset, you already getting divorced. You got to have a made up mind. I don't care what this rascal do you mind now huh? you stuck with me huh? I ain't going nowhere huh? if you didn't want me you shouldn't have married me because huh? I ain't signing no papers huh? I don't care how miserable you try to make me huh? we tied together till Jesus come because huh? I swore before God huh? in sickness and in health huh? for richer or for poorer huh? for better or for worse And if you're going to stay married, 
you got to have a mind made up to say, I'm going to be married. I don't care what the devil say. I don't care what the devil do. I don't care how good the next girl look. I don't care what, what I, don't, I don't care if, if she cheat. I'm going to keep her anyhow. Oh, Lord, how you say that? Because I swore before God for better or for worse. But you got to have a made up mind if you're going to make that thing work. Because I promise you, if you're hanging there and keep praying, if you're hanging there and keep serving the Lord, if you'll just be faithful to God and keep your vow, God will make all things work together for your good. But you got to change your thinking if you're going to change your life. The way you think about yourself automatically determines the available possibilities for your life. I said the way you think about yourself automatically determines the difference between a chump and a chump is that the chump shows up to the fight hoping to be the winner. But the champ shows up to prove that he's the winner because he already sees himself as the winner. So if one person always already sees himself as the champ, as the victor, as the winner, and you show up hoping to beat them, uh, you've already lost. Um, see, one of my favorite fighters is Mike Tyson. Uh, Mike Tyson had his victims defeated before they even got in the ring. Huh? They were already shook before they put their boots on, you understand? Huh? So he beat them in their mind. Huh? They were already ready to be knocked out. Huh? Well, the devil got some of y'all shook right now. The devil been chasing some of y'all around and don't realize huh, that you've got an atomic bomb in your hand. Huh, and you being chased by a toothless junkyard dog huh, who can't even bite. All he can do is bark. Huh, but you don't understand the weapons at your disposal. Huh, so you're a champ that's running from a chump. Huh, but when you come to understand who you really are, huh, when you begin to think like the person God made you to be, huh, you begin to whoop that devil like Left and right. Devil, you got to get out of my house. Devil, you got to get out of my child. Devil, you got to get off my job. Devil, you got to get on out of here. I'm standing in the name of Jesus. And I've got victory. If you got victory over the enemy and the world, can't do you no harm. You ought to put your hands together and say glory. Uh, you have to know and accept that you are what God said you are. When you change the way you see yourself and accept that you are what God said you are, then you will see a change in your life. See yourself forgiven. See yourself healed. See yourself restored. See yourself prosperous. See yourself powerful. See yourself supernatural. See yourself prophetic. See yourself in victory. See yourself with your family being saved. You got to see yourself the way God said you are. You've got to think about your life the way God said it is. You've got to reprogram your mind by the word of God. Oh, yes. And when you're thinking what God is saying, you'll see his word manifesting in your life. Can I get two witnesses in the house? If you love the word, if you love the spirit, if you've seen a change in your life, when you change your thinking, somebody say yes. Ah, every change you've been seeking huh, begins with a shift in your mindset. Change your thinking. 
change your life when you trust and believe that God is your comfort and your relief you will be set free from every addiction change your thinking change your life when you understand you have a choice in your emotional state you'll stop being manipulated by your family change your thinking change your life when you grasp that having received the Holy Ghost you are already empowered for victory over sin you will live holy as God intended and see the lives of your loved ones transformed change your thinking change your life when you expect answers all prayers will be answered when you expect healing prayers will bring healing when you expect miracles you will see miracles change your thinking change your life stop telling yourself that you can't be who God called you to be stop telling yourself that you can't do what God has called you to do he made you he designed you he saved you he washed you he cleansed you he filled you he empowered you and now he's waiting for you to stand up and be who he's called you to be change your thinking change your entire life somebody say yeah